Welcome to the GSD Factor podcast with your host, Misha Blamire Farish. Welcome to the GSD Factor podcast, season three. This is our first episode here in 2024, and I am so excited and honored to have Alex Ostojit calling in from Phoenix. Hi, Alex. How are you today? Good morning. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for coming. And I know that your service animal, Lainey, is also with you asleep on the floor. We're excited to have you both with us. And Alex, I'm really excited to have you for you to share your story um, in the insurance industry with our listeners today. So Alex, tell us a little bit about your story. Sure. My name is Alex Ostojic. I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. About a a couple months after birth, uh, my parents and I, we relocated to Cardiff, Wales for a short period of time. It didn't work out, so we returned to the U.S. And then I went to a private Lutheran school from preschool to the eighth grade. And while I was there, I had to do in dual dual enrollment at the public school system in order to get the special services from my IEP, which is the Individualized Education Plan. Because of that and battling with the system, I was able to get into a good high school and I graduated pretty well on time. And then after high school, I went to Illinois State University. My first major declared was to be a special education major. Shortly after into the basic courses, I decided it wasn't the right fit. So I switched into the actual science and business field. After thinking about actual science and finance, I ultimately decided on risk management insurance. The reason I selected risk management insurance is because Every day is different. I'm able to evaluate risk. I'm able to assist clients in times of need. And I also have a sister. Her name's Nicole. She is an underwriter as well for a company in Washington. And then here I am in 2024, still in the insurance industry. It took a little time due to the hiring freezes and the pandemic back in 2020. And due to some complications with schooling at the end, I was only uh, one semester later than schedule. Well, that's an amazing feat. So congratulations, Alex. And I want to really dive into why insurance and, you know, because I think what's so important is as we are bringing on the next generation into our ind- insurance industry, um, we need um, new thoughts and ideas and innovation and um, diversity. And I think that I really want to plant those seeds of encouragement and inspiration with um, those that are your generation and younger. So can you share with us, you know, why insurance? What 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 do you enjoy most about it? Sure. So why insurance? I decided to pursue a career in the insurance industry because some of the opportunities that I consider in the past, education, being a medical professional, it wasn't in line with what I was interested in when I was in the schooling era. So uh, every day is different in the insurance industry. I'm able to interact with clients. I'm able to interact with insurance professionals. While I was at Illinois State University or ISU, I actually attended a couple of insurance conferences, including the National Risk Retention Association Conference, the Professional Liability Underwriting Society Conference in the Washington, D.C. area. So that was actually pretty cool since it was one of the, the one only ones that I was able to actually travel for a conference in school. The others were local or within driving distance. So that was pretty special to me since I was able to do that. And then also the fact that I'm able to give back to the community is important to me while I school and 
outside of school, I always took pride in giving back to the community. And in the scouting, I was a Boy Scout and Eagle Scout as well. So I did a lot of service involvement and making sure that we get back appropriately. And then with the insurance industry, even with a bachelor's degree in risk management insurance, I'm continuing my professional education and continue education with my adjusting coursework, as well as the designations through the Institute. I completed my associate in claims in September 2022, and I'm still working on the CPCU designation as well as the ANS designation. So opportunities are endless as long as you find the right fit, even during challenging times. I think that's such an amazing nugget that you're sharing, right? Is that there are always opportunities and not just as you are moving from one um, profession to another or within the industry, you can continue to upskill. You can continue to get those additional certifications, which can pivot you from one thing to another. And there's amazing opportunities all around. So, um, you know, as you get into the insurance space, you can, um, and maybe that season changes for you, you can still stay with the insurance space, but you can pivot and relaunch. And so when, when Alex thinks for himself about, you know, what is that ideal job or what is that what I like to call dream big job what where do you see yourself here Alex in the next couple years on as far as where you want to be within your role within our within our insurance industry that's a great question I actually thought about my career path lately so over the next five years I want to be a senior property claims specialist, either as a desk adjuster or a field adjuster, develop the skills and participate in additional leadership opportunities within the insurance industry, as well as within the job that I am fulfilling, whether it's now or in the future. And I'm able to develop those skills, the scoping skills, investigation skills, continuing to excel in different estimating platforms, and then ultimately use those skills to advance as a supervisor in the next five to 10 years, whether it's a field adjusting supervisor or a just adjusting supervisor for virtual claims. And, and the path of fulfilling the CPCU designation. I love it, Alex. I think that five-year plan sounds fantastic. And I love that you've already kind of plotted it out, right? I'm a strong believer in roadmaps because, you know, where we start and where we want to go there and what's the plan to get there. And our roadmaps allow for those pivots and zigs and zags, right? But you have that ultimate goal. And um, I'm excited for us to follow in your journey here over the next five years to see where you go. You've asked for it, we've created it. We now have an expanded merch shop full of GSD swag to keep you motivated to get shit done. From notebooks and tote bags, water bottles and coffee mugs, sweatshirts and more, we've got you. Visit gsdfactor.com to see everything available. And don't forget to get shit done. So let's do our own little pivot for a minute and talk about the GSD factor life. And that life is around six attributes. So be confident, inquisitive, imaginative, being present, be resilient, and be influential. So Alex, which which attribute or attributes do you feel resonate for you the most in your life at this time? Oh, that's great. There's actually a couple that resonate to me right, right now influential, I would say companies and professionals, whether in the insurance industry or outside the insurance industry, talk about that first thing inclusion all the time. But in my experiences, it's unfortunate to say that companies 
and statistics are showing one thing, but when you experience it firsthand, it's showing nothing or the complete opposite. So the fact that some of the companies are actively supporting disability inclusion, that is important to me. And I have witnessed it firsthand um, with a previous company and previous opportunities actually being part of developing that employee research groups for individuals with diverse individual and visible abilities. So that was special to me and to, to also be accepted as someone with an insurance, be someone that has a service animal in the workplace. It was a bit rocky at the beginning just with the paperwork and stuff like that, but everyone was welcoming and learned that there are some things we need to adjust, not only for myself, but for others. For example, when I'm at work, I advise it's better for us to go greet them instead of people greeting us at our desk. The reason is because Lainey does a very good job of learning and when she's learning, sometimes she'll make noise and people sometimes have the that type of walk or just coming without notice. So it's easier for us to go to people. And then some of the other ones was being confident. I'm going to be honest, everyone, the last few months have been rough for me personally as I need to focus on my true self and as well as my professional career and mental self. I'm going to be looking for an opportunity that accepts me as an individual and is not a toxic work environment. Can you repeat some of the other traits? Absolutely. Well? So first of all, I want to say that being I love your be influential and your be confident. And so I want to come back to the be influential in a minute. But the other ones are be inquisitive, be imaginative, be present, and be resilient. I would say the last one that connects to me right now is being present, staying in the moment as I'm witnessing some obstacles that may have not happened few months ago. So just staying in the moment, day by day, one minute at a time, working together with others, um, serving those who have served at my current employer, as well as just doing things I can do. I know the, the process can be lengthy at, at times, but you can't control the length. You can only control what's going on. If the right thing comes, great. If not, you keep going. And then the fact that I need to stay present because just yesterday or the day prior, I was having second thoughts about leaving the industry, actually, because unfortunately, I received some harsh words from people and this year. It's only January and I already received some harsh words. My value in the industries are people going to accept me for a, who I am and avoid bias or judgment. So I'm in a tough time right now. So I'm hoping that good things will come in the next month or so. First of all, Alex, I want to thank you for your transparency and your vulnerability. And I think that um, I hope our listeners are hearing your heart in this. And um, I just so appreciate you sharing where you're at. And and right now is a season, um, is a rough season, right? And I think, you know, one of the things that I have admired about your story is that you, what I would call a gsd -er, right? You encompass all the attributes. And right now you're having to activate three or four of them. And um, you know, there are those seasons, the good seasons and the not so good seasons. And as we can learn something from everything, right, we are always learning where we can learn what to do and we can learn what not to do. And I think as individuals, 
um, we learn what not to do a lot from others as well. And um, I think that as people as people are out there in the world, and when they see and when they see or experience something different, um, and they're not used to it, unfortunately. Um, it's sad to say that they approach that with, um, with negativity. And I just want to say how proud I am that you're still in the insurance industry. We need you in this industry. Um, and I thank you for standing on your platform and for diversity, because I think, um, that DEIB is so important. And I think what you and Lainey are doing by bringing that awareness and bringing those of us in the insurance industry together um, for that cause and that mission um, is so important. And so um, I hope you are encouraged. I hope that you um, know that we have your back and um, we are cheering you on. And I look forward to having you on the podcast again down the road where we can talk about um, how this pivot, you know, how this pivot changed your life and how you're now on the other side and able to look at that um, experience and say it was hard, but I'm resilient and I and I got it done. And I guess my last question, one of my last questions for you would be, you know, for those that are for those that are trying to get into the insurance industry or those that are in the insurance industry and um, have those um, disabilities or are neurodivergent, what would that word of encouragement be from you? That's a great question. Um, Thank you for your feedback and response. I would say trust the process is the main one. For me personally, it took uh, 546 days to receive a job offer from graduation. So definitely trust the process, advocate for yourself. I know the big question of us in the recruiting application and onboarding process, do we disclose, do we not disclose? I know I personally disclose on the application that I have it, but I know some people may be afraid, which is understandable, but also somebody may put, put it and then turn out that they're being discriminated against for putting it and or saying it in an interview and being able to support yourself in the process, but in turn that Companies, recruiters, managers, and interviews have a a block tunnel in them. So trust the process, reach out to others, seek help when needed. I'm not the best interviewer, I'm being honest, but I I, I use my help as needed. And I want to give a big thank you to my my peers that I had at Illinois State University, Gamma Iona Sigma, the Katie School of Insurance and Risk Management, a few others, including Tony Canyas, as well as an individual that I was referred to because of Tony, who is in the, the Phoenix area as well. Lamont Boyd. Shout out to all of you. You're all part of what I like to call the GSD Factor Clan or the GSD Factor Insiders Board. And um, I think that um, surrounding ourselves with those people that are going to advocate and encourage us and push us or just give us what we need in those moments are so important. And so, Alex, I want to thank you for using your voice as your strongest weapon, right? And coming on the podcast today and sharing um, sharing your struggles, but sharing your successes. And I'm really excited for us to see where you go here in the next five years. And, um, you know, thank you so much for doing this. And our final question, which has been, um, it's been a recurring theme for us here in 2024, is the phrase, I am powerfully choosing. And so Alex would love to ask you that question. What are you powerfully choosing in 2024? 
Sure, that's a great question. I am powerfully choosing an opportunity that accepts me as an individual, values my experiences and educational background, and disregards my speech and eye contact due to being on the spectrum. Bravo, friend. And we are so excited to see how your powerfully choosing intentionality manifests here in 2024. So we'll have to stay in touch. Alex, where can people connect and reach out to you? Sure. Um, people can find me on LinkedIn primarily. I, If they send me a, a connection invite or a message, I usually reply somewhat quickly. I'm actually awesome. glued to my LinkedIn, so people might get a message in the evening hours when they they might be thinking I'm sleeping. So I'm pretty <laughs> responsive when it comes to that. And then also, I do want to thank everyone for having me on the podcast today and for following me over the past several years, ex- including in 2023. You may have heard that my service dog Laney was diagnosed with skin cancer and you might have been part of that at first so i appreciate every one of you Laney is doing well her follow-ups are continuing to be great and with minimal impacts of side effects so thank you all very much and for being a supporter of diversity equity inclusion and belonging especially disability inclusion in the workplace i appreciate everyone Well, Alex, thank you so much, friend. It has been such an honor to have you and thank you for sharing your story. And to all our podcast listeners, we appreciate you guys tuning in and be sure to connect with Alex. We have linked his LinkedIn within the show notes. And we just want to remind everybody to remember the GSD factor life of being confident and inquisitive and imaginative, being present, resilient, and influential. And here in 2024, figure out what it is that you want to powerfully choose. Maybe it's for yourself, for your team, for your organization. Um, Maybe it's powerfully choosing an attribute or maybe it's powerfully choosing something else like a job or yourself or self-care, whatever it is in that moment. So thank you all for tuning in and don't forget to get shit done. Thanks for listening to the GSD Factor podcast. If you liked this episode, please rate and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform, where you can also find previous episodes. Let's also connect on LinkedIn and Instagram. If you're looking for more information on the GSD Factor, visit us at gsdfactor.com. And always remember to GSD, get shit done.